Right, you are live. Thank you. All right, good evening. It is Wednesday, March 1st here in the Secondary School Media Center. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Waiting just a second because I was saw Mrs. Strunk walking in the door here. We're going to go ahead and do roll call and reflect that Christensen's not here. Nesman is here. Wilson? Here. Sabalik is not with us tonight. Sandstead? Here. Ulrich? Here. And Strunk? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll move into recognition of visitors and public comment. Do we have any individuals that wish to address the board tonight? Okay, we'll move into modifying our agenda for tonight. We do have a couple of revisions. We're going to add under uh, 1A, we're going to add number two, two resignations, the assistant baseball coach, and number three, Peter Ray, the English teacher. And then we are also going to, under the consent agenda, add under new hires number two, um, approving the hire of Nisa Nadwick. Under new business, we're going to remove number two and number three, and we're going to add a discussion item, certified and non-certified staff seniority lists. Any other modifications to tonight's agenda? We should have one more addition there. I apologize. It should be resignation would be um, Lee Sikora as assistant baseball coach as well. We're going to add under resignations number four, Lee Sikora as assistant baseball coach. Any other modifications to tonight's agenda? Seeing as none, I'll ask if there's a motion to approve the modified agenda. Mm -hmm. And is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. Motion passes. Moving on to uh, committee reports. Looks like we have a buildings and grounds report uh, this evening. And Mr. Bromo, where would you like to start that update? Sure. So um, I'm just going to double check to make sure I can find that. And I know um, kind of from that uh, report there, uh, Jared and, and Maya were both there. So I know we talked about some summer priorities that would need to happen over the summertime. One is those partition walls that we were purchased last year. And so we have a group that's able to start looking those over to get those installed. Um, my understanding is we could get some done at North. I think the others we were gonna have to wait otherwise there'd be too much, too much disruption uh, to students and classes and stuff like that. So we'd wait till summer to get those pieces done there. Um, I know one of the things I've been a little more reserved on spending. And so I think there had to be some clarification to say, no, we need the lights taken care of out in the commons area. When people come into our building, they need to be able to see. So I said, uh, so they said, yeah, that's why we have some fun balance to take care of those things. So we're, I know Chad's already got that on his list to get those pieces taken care of. There, I think there was conversation about the lights in the gym just a little bit where the batting cages are trying to figure out. Um, they really did measure. I think there was some thought that maybe they weren't measured where they were placed. Or they just happened to be placed there, but there's really no other spot to go with those on those pieces. And then I think, so to me doing all the talking, I'm going to let oh, you. I was just going to say, yeah, so the, the batting cage, the size of the cage and how it had to fall on the court with the baskets um dictated where it fell over the lights so as they look at upgrading those to an led or fixture they would realign those to be better suited for the cage i think they also talked about potentially dropping those that are above the cage down a little bit whereas yeah, it's normally they're sunk up in the ceiling trying to protect them a little bit the cage will be the protector so they can drop those down and try to get better light out of that and it's two cages rather than one because yep. the one cage was too close, so it was a little dangerous while kids were hitting. Yep. So. And so, so yeah, so they have two nice cages in there. I think it's a great addition. I mean, I, I think it's good. It From turned out well. Yeah, you insurance know. recovery. So that's right. Really so, so, uh, so it wasn't like it was just an all out investment for us, but it'll be way better for our teams. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like the lights out front here, just the fact that. We could have waited to have one manufactured that looks exactly like what's out there 26 weeks or we can get them done next week and just change them all out and make them all so they look like you know so they look good and you can see out there um just a couple conversations on that 
And then there's a few other things that besides the partitions, you know, there's a couple of sidewalk issues that, you know, need to get taken care of and, and, um, bathroom issue at salt with yep, the, and they get a toilet with they're flush, get yeah. it fixed. And then of course we talked about some roof repairs, at basically all three facilities. Unfortunately, this building has roof repairs, which, you know, the idea was we put a new roof on, <laughs> we don't want to repair for a while, but there are a couple gremlins up there that they have to get figured out. And so, um, those are things that we, we need to get taken care of so we don't have other issues that stem from leaks. But um, this isn't the time of year to fix those. So mm -hmm. we'll be, there'll be a few more drips before they're fixed. So um, there's a few more things on the list. Some of those things are, you know, I think we have to, we'll have to sit down and prioritize a little bit better on what, what comes first. Um, but definitely quite a few pieces that you know we'll start to look at and some of the project items we'll need to get going sooner than later otherwise there won't be there won't be workers you know if we don't get on right now and get somebody lined up so i don't know anything else oh, that's, that's good. we did kind of start <laughs> a preliminary what are we going to do facilities wise because a lot of these things tie into what happens with that structure you know do we is that part of a remodel later is it you know something that does now what how does that look so um i mean we didn't get real deep into that i think we're going to talk more about that today of where do we start with that process again so we had a little discussion on that of what, what what's the next step where do we go do we do we back up do we start with a new you know what, what does that look like we, we just started a little bit of that and so i think we'll we'll do more of that later here today but we kind of talked a little bit on that as well you know what does that look like I think, yeah mainly we kind of talked about keeping what we got dry and the elements out mm -hmm. of and safe entry and exit to the yeah it's kind of right the sidewalk yeah. pieces that yeah. are breaking yeah, the major points we kind of touched on, but. doors that aren't working properly <laughs> i don't want snow drifts in the hallways after the weekend so <laughs> very good Thank you for an update. We'll move into administrative reports and we'll start with Mr. McNamara and a technology update. All right, I just got a few uh, quick things. Uh, first off, great category 1470 has been posted. Um, that's the request for bids for internet connection and data transportation. Um, that takes care of our primary internet connection to this building and the least fiber that connects this building to north and south, so 21 miles of least fiber. Um, that is, in the technology department, that's our largest, one of our largest costs, largest annual cost. Um, so E-rate takes care of 70% of that for us. But just because it's a conversation we constantly have over and over again, that 70% is all predicated on our free and reduced numbers. So. If we if that um, if that goes down because we are offering free food or in Minnesota, this is a federal program, that 70% can very quickly become 50% or less, and that would be a pretty heavy strain financially on the school district. Um is there any yet so I guess one uh, maybe this is a different topic, but is there any you know if they pass the Free lunches in Minnesota, and we're talking about a federal program. Is there any other incentive for people to fill out that free and reduced, other than the fact that we may save other places, or is there? It just really isn't anything else. Well, I determine that one comes from that because if we don't have to fill out that obviously reduces the amount we get. So right. I don't know. We can do something to incentivize that for families. State will or right. for, for families, I know that one of the, I believe, and Jake's not here, but I believe we have sports discounted rates yep. for sports fees. Yep. But that doesn't impact 100% our family, and right. it impacts no one below seventh grade. Right. I know some schools do technology, and I think we're looking at that a little bit because we started to see more repairs with our technology. So there might be a self insurance that you may have to pay 20 or $30 to self insure your technology. Okay. Um, and I know some districts have said if you complete the form, 
will cover that for you because okay. because of e rate or other pieces there that really kind of there's so many other programs that fall in line but that is a major concern from a lot of the school districts right. matter of fact there's some school districts <coughs> that are that don't get much grade <coughs> reduced and so they're really concerned you know about all those being covered because how does that impact them so mm -hmm. it's not as clear cut it sounds pretty clear right. but there's some sounds folks like a great that are, idea right right but yeah it worked out well before but down snowball effect because yeah our compensatory would be huge and that's what we'll talk about in diane's report is those numbers because more people have now qualified <coughs> being on medical assistance and so it was a direct certification <coughs> so we've seen a huge increase in our compensatory funding it was large and then it really dropped down and now we're going to be back up yeah way of preliminary never show pretty good so that's a concern that some schools have is to say because the bad part is when it's in your lunch you can only use it for lunch so you can have that fund balance grow but you can't use it to take care of other expenses you know in your general fund and so but then your general fund dropped because your compensatory dropped so it's kind of a real it sounds simple mm -hmm. but the dilemma when it comes to it's really just taking money from one pot and moving it to another pot is really what's happening and and the, the pot that it's going to is more restricted because you can't you can't even pay you know when schools were starting to see more money they said we'll lose pay for everybody's lunch no you can't subsidize anybody else's lunch through food search if you take it out of your general fund so if you said hey we're going to cover twenty thousand dollars in meals okay we got to take that out of your general fund well that doesn't help you deplete your right. other fund so so there's some ties there and stuff like that so yeah so i think that's the concern that we have is how that all plays out, and I've been told it's a done deal. Like the free lunch is really, that's one thing that for sure is going to happen. So we'll just have to be prepared on finding ways for folks to fill out that form and, and uh, the value and importance of that. Maybe the direct certification will still help us just a little bit. So we'll have to see from there. One of the pieces we added this year was an electronic form for submission for free and reduced. We made it much simpler for families with the new pieces, the new payment system we switched into. We were kind of fumbling a little bit at the beginning of the year, so we didn't really push it out the way we could have. Um, I think as we generate this spring to get ready to go back out in August, we'll be much better prepared to show that. And it's a five minute online you can do it right from your phone and it kind of instantly gives you information on whether you qualify or not so um we just have to figure out something doing the form collecting the form we have an easier process for that it's just going to be getting people to actually do it what's the incentive on them unfortunately there's a lot of people in the world that just it's the what's in it for me when when you talk about if it were to drop from 70 to 50 for example that would be what what kind of number is that roughly like what's the financial wise, impact yeah but, or this rough, roughly every single year between category one and category two um we it's about a hundred thousand dollars between what we spend in category one and category two we had a 70 percent discount so you're talking seventy thousand dollars so Roughly every percent is about a thousand dollars. Sure. It, it not exactly. It differs every year depending on what our needs are for infrastructure and those pieces. But I would say if you want a rough, easy number to work with, that would be it. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, all right. Sorry to open it. No, I, 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 I didn't mean to cut you off. It just was <laughs> one of those pieces. It was like yeah, yeah, that's no, a good. That, you know, that's, those are those it takes are good down a rabbit hole. Just quick. If nothing else, just understand the, the fingerlings that a mm -hmm. situation like that has on lots of different areas. Mm -hmm. um, overall, I think it was very successful distance learning that we had this year. Um, our teachers have done a great job of utilizing the technology they have available. Our students are incredible problem solvers. Um, I think that our teachers are doing a really great job. What I always want to see is not just can you do the technology? What can you do with the technology? And I, I've seen a lot of cool things at all different grade levels of what the kids are creating. How are you demonstrating learning and understanding based on the, the mediums that you're given? And I've seen tons of cool things that teachers have had me come in and talk to kids about how to record videos of themselves, how to do, you know, presentations, create video, like create um, little kind of mock website type things. So, Lots of really cool things where kids are learning how to create something that will potentially, you know, benefit them in the future while still learning and demonstrating what they're learning content-wise as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, student device rotation bids are coming up for me. Um, so each year we we have our devices for K through four that stay in the classroom. In starting in fifth grade, we buy new devices for the students. The students carry those devices for four years through eighth grade. And then again, we buy a new device for the students in ninth grade, and they carry those through to 12th grade. So it's four years by rotation. Up until just about a month ago, we really had one vendor who had a four-year accidental damage, everything included policy that came with the devices. And finally, I found a second vendor that just started in there based out of St. Paul um, that I can work with. So it, if nothing else, I don't know if their price is going to be better, but at least we have bids to compare with. So instead of just having a one-off bid of this is the only people who really do this, now I at least have another place where I can go to and make sure that we are getting the best price available for the <coughs> district. And School Messenger, when, when we send out a call, it goes out to about 1,800 phone numbers, and it takes about seven and a half minutes. From the time I push go to the time it's done, about seven and a half minutes. So, but when uh, Paul calls me in the morning, it takes me about, well, it takes me a few minutes to get up and happy enough to actually record something. But by the time I actually do that, it's usually about 15 minutes that I can get that call out. So really about 20 to 30 minutes and we can. <coughs> so I, I think that there, there isn't a much more efficient process than what we have going on. I think it's working pretty well. So that's all for technology unless people have questions. No? Okay. Mrs. Dots, community in. All right. Um, I have to make a couple changes in my report to the weather and like that. Um, but last month I attended a community ed conference. Um, it was super cool to see different districts and different sizes and see how they run things. Um, Christy and I are heading down to Benson tomorrow for a regional community ed director meeting. Um, so that one I'm super excited for because there's a lot of schools around here, easier to compare. Um, March STEAM registration is still open for South, and as of today, is full for North. Um, huge thank you to the co-ed volleyball teams that participated this season. Um, championship night was supposed to be tonight, uh, but is now rescheduled to next Wednesday, so that's three reschedules now. And another thank you to the high school workers. Um, fourth grade ski trip is rescheduled to next Wednesday. So I'm determined next <laughs> Wednesday he might be first. I'm sorry, but it has boy volleyball and fourth grade ski trip, which I've rescheduled multiple, multiple times. So fingers crossed. Um, summer rec work has begun. I'm going to start advertising for coaches this month. Um, Mr. Bromlow and I need to look at um, pay scales and things for coaches, so that'll be coming down the pipe soon. Um, Prairie Fire Theater is coming at the end of March uh, to put on Robin Hood. Spring wrestling is going to be starting soon. Mr. Grupo and I have started getting registration up and running. That'll be after state is done. I think we'll be able to iron out all those details. Um, but it'll look very similar to what has been offered in years past. Um, looking at offering another firearm safety course this spring, just working on some dates with the instructors. Um, and trying to find a week that won't interfere a ton with spring sports, but I, I don't think that'll happen. We'll, we'll try our best. Um, we got a confirmation email on the VPK application that it was complete and accepted, um, but we won't get information on that potential funding until in or around May. So it's done. They have it. It's been accepted. Now it's just the waiting game. Um, and then last thing I have, I've had a few calls and emails regarding um, summer child care, next year's child care, and then preschool next year. I'm following the same schedule that Naomi did in years past, so that'll open up in late April. And um, so soon um, information will be going out to families so they can start prepping for that. And I plan on using the same schedule and same times, all of that, um, to open up summer care, preschool, and fall child care next year as well. So, any questions? <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. We'll skip activities and buildings and grounds until the superintendent report and move on to Ms. Prash for elementary. All right. Um, once again, conferences, good grade attendance, and 96% of our families attend elementary conferences, which is great. And the families of children are teachers are reaching out to, so everybody will make sure that they get that contact, both with the report cards and any other concerns or questions that they have in class. 
uh, due to the weather last week, we moved kindergarten around to this week. Um, we are expecting about 30 students at north and about 20 at south. We always seem to gain kindergartners over the summer. I don't know why that is, but every year we've always added more. So that's obviously our hope that we get some more kindergartners enrolling in the district as well. But the kids get to come to the school. They can turn their paperwork. They can take their picture next to the sign that says class of 2036, which makes me feel really old. Mm -hmm. uh, they a backpack. It has a book and a pencil and some paper and all kinds of fun stuff. They've got a good time. Um, the professional learning community time on the 17th was very much appreciated by the staff. We got to meet with their grade level teams. So they got to discuss uh, any grade level issues. We've been talking about curriculum alignment a lot this year, and we also have to have report card changes by June 1st, so they've been working a little bit on that as well. And then on March 31st, that's going to be vertical team time. So second grade will get to meet with third grade, and then they'll get to meet with first grade as well. So they can do that vertical alignment, making sure we're all up and ready to go with everything we need for the kids. Um, I know next year with the calendar being set with the PLC times once a month, that's going to be greatly appreciated. The staff is very excited about that, and I think it'll be a great help along with that um, curriculum alignment piece. And um, we talked about the curriculum cycle a little bit, but it's off because um, MDE kept delaying the standards release due to COVID. So the standards like science, for instance, that were supposed to be released in 22 are actually going to be released now in 24. So just back things up a little bit, but we'll figure it out. Um, March 14th, the North PTO is bringing the Stydome to the gym. All the classes get to go through this a 45 minute lesson and they get to walk through the dome and have some break out from the Science Museum walk them through. It's really cool. So that'll be fun for the kids. We also have lots of field trips coming up. We're a little concerned about the weather just because it's been a lot this year. Just saying. <laughs> we have a really big snow pile full and I have to tell you it's like watching little penguins just jump into the water. They do it. I didn't lift them too, except no snow pants, and they wet the rest of the day. That's not as much fun, but um, it's amazing the amount of snow, and the kids are loving it, which is great, but I'm kind of over it. So <laughs> we're kind of hoping that things get a little bit better and our field trips go out for lunch, because we'd like to go to Morris to see Charlotte's Web. Our PTOs are going to pay for the kids to go see that. Um, so like I said, we're kind of waiting on some of those things to make sure we can actually do them. Any questions? When you have some staff, I think that are looking potentially to go on the 31st, right? Yes, to Ada have, Bora. Um, right up to Ada Bora to see their intervention program. It's looking like we can go the 31st. So Sean and Jake are two of the interventionists at North and South. And then we have a couple of um, other teachers who are also interested in attending at that time. Very good. Thank you. Um, we'll move down to the business manager update, Mrs. Powers. The Affordable Care Act for 1095C, which has to be on by today, or no, tomorrow, to all employees has been available online today. For all employees that can grow, it would be a smarter system to develop themselves. We'll be mailing out copies tomorrow of those that don't print it up. Title allocation will be reallocated. Title one is going to go up for this year for $5,100. Title two, $879. And title three, $307 for a total of $6,388. So that will help. Okay. Um, other than that, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Allie for all of her extra hours and work that she's done in the time tracker system. It's the time clock system that we're implementing because the time clock plus system is going away in April. She's been working with the women that have not only been in the house, I think I'm going to make some of them ready on it and using it. And so far, it's going to be a few more couple of inches, but she's been able to get in the child to sound well. Very good. Any comments or questions from the board? I'll leave all the rest to you. All the rest to me. Uh-oh. Well, I told Diane to give me the cutoff <laughs> sign if it starts to get to be too long. So, because um, you have an asterisk next to your, your time. There you go. Yeah. That'll work. Yeah. It's okay. too late. We're past my asterisk. So. <laughs> okay. There we go. So, secondary school report. Um, as Mrs. Holland states here, winter uh, sports are kind of coming down to a close here already. I believe the girls' season uh, was yesterday. Uh, wrestling is going down to the uh, state tournament tomorrow. And then we have boys basketball will be hosting a playoff game on Saturday. So a lot of events going on there. And with um, with our uh, state wrestling, of course, we are closing school tomorrow. And uh, 
and uh, to allow fans and staff to go down. We do have a plan there, and we'll share that a little bit later on that piece. They've got the Deep Portage Center there you're going to see. So I know the kids have worked very hard uh, for their fundraising and the like, because I think there was a lot of money that was collected to make sure that they could, could attend that. Um, had the Greenhouse Open House. Of course, weather had to impact that as well, but it turned out to be a very nice day. Had some dignitaries that came from out of state uh, that were able to present and, and heard some great things there. And, and I think got to go out and enjoy some warm weather right out in the greenhouse. So if we could just have that to take over, that would be good. Staffing, as you see, we have uh, Mr. Ray's English position now. He is resigning that position as well. So we have a real need for English teachers. So if you know of an English teacher, we might need to talk to them because that's going to be a challenge. And I really think it's not just us. If you go onto the Ed Post website, you're going to notice that there's a lot of schools that are, are really struggling. And so I'm very concerned about that piece of what we're going to do to get people to come out to a great school. And I think that's what we're going to have to sell. I mean, it's going to be, I was just uh, sharing, I think, with Diane this morning that I know in a couple of prior districts that I've been at, sometimes somebody in the household dictates that they'll say, I'm willing to move, but I need to be within 45 minutes of Target or a regional center. And so that's going to, it's typically not the male on that side. Cabela's and, and uh, Fleet Farm might be the other, but that's sometimes those pieces that you have to look at. And it's not just our teaching staff. It's going to be all of our staff pieces that we're, I think we're still not completely full in our paraprofessional staff. And so that's going to be the challenge as we move forward there because each place is trying to find new ways to incent people, pay them more. And when they do that, then we got to try to find ways to do that. And our budget's limited. And so we got to figure out ways that we can take care of that. So, and then I know Mrs. Holland was just starting to look at, as we talked about the strategic roadmap, some of those pieces that will put together that vision um, scorecard to say, here's the plan, here's the goal. One of the things that she really likes to do is looking from uh, an alternative learning piece for some of the kids that are here. And, and I think the pandemic really started to exacerbate that just a little bit, but they don't learn the traditional way. And so trying to find some of that relevant learning for them is going to be a challenge. And so she's looking at some different ways for kids that feel like coming to school right now isn't uh, in the best interest of their time. And so we're trying to find out different things that we can do to engage all of our kids, enriching the the high, the ones that are doing very well to the ones who are struggling, to the ones who don't feel it's relevant, trying to figure out all those different pieces. So she's going to make that one of her goals to, to look at an ALP or an ALC. And so there is some challenges, expense, space, all those things um, come with that but I do think it's a need that we're seeing grow just a little bit more and more. It's not the traditional where you just send them into your classrooms and say, we're teaching you and you're just gonna do it this way. And when you walk out the door, you should be fine. We've gotta find some ways to change that. So she'll be working on that and continuing to report back to the board on those pieces there. Any questions on that from Mrs. Holland? Then if you look at Chad's report there, um, so really working to get those walls put up and we know that we need to get them put up at both elementary schools. And so I think we now have somebody who's willing to do that. Of course, timing is going to be everything. One, finding a group that's going to, if they, if it's not a large enough project, I think some of our folks are looking at bigger projects and then they fill up their work time. And so trying to get that taken care of now, but then at the same point, Natalie's got kids in all those spaces. And so we got to figure out ways not to interrupt that to get that taken care of. So we'll be doing that. And looks like there's some plumbing fixtures that we need to take care of at North. At the secondary school, the open house went well. Uh, he does reference the meat packing. And so that'll be a piece that we'll have to look at. I felt after last week's meeting, I think there's still some opportunity maybe to get some support out. The school has some responsibility. And, and I think you've already... Um, designated about $80,000 towards the greenhouse or, and starting to look at that meat packing side. I think it was um, 50,000 greenhouse and then another 30,000 to do some of the plumbing and the electrical work that was that was there. But there's strong support. I mean, I know there's a gentleman all the way from Pennsylvania uh, who stopped in and, and spoke just a little bit. So I think there's some real strong support to see this move forward. Um, but we'll have to make sure we have things laid out. I think one of the things that Maya talked about a while back, and I still have the, the document on my computer, is generators. If all of a sudden the electricity goes out, what happens to everything in that greenhouse? How far does that set us back? They're not cheap. So we'll have to really work those pieces there to see what we can do. But it's also not cheap if we lose that and those kids were in that class and now don't have access to that. So we we'll want to make sure we, we take care of that. And then the tool cat um, that has broke down. And I know Chad got that uh, over to Fergus Falls. 
my immediate question because it looks like a very nice piece of equipment. So I'm sure it had to be covered under warranty <laughs> up until August. And so we'll be looking at that to see what we can do. Some hydraulic lines well above what I know what to do on those. I can't get my own tractor to start to plow my own driveway it backfires and it doesn't start so i'm going to find somebody better than me to to take care of that so so worst, the worst part about that machine is those are all hoses that go from front to back so and it, it's you no space you've got to get fun to work underneath and into the yeah to get those out you have to take the whole line out oh to, yeah so anyway so it it's a nightmare no it's it's good to take it somewhere take it we can't drop it off yeah. this place and see if you yeah, can get well, it take it. he probably could do it but okay little duct tape, little bailing wire would be fine. There, there you go. So, and you'll see that, um, as Maya mentioned, we have some leaks here in the roof, the crossover hallway, um, which isn't too far away from Tracy's room, but I think Chad told us that they weren't connected. He didn't believe, because remember, over Mrs. Frickman's room, we had a leak there that we did address. Um, when we had McDowell come up this fall, they took care of leaks at South, North, and the, middle, and the secondary school here, but he said this is a different leak. I've always been told if you have a flat roof, just plan on leaks, no matter how new or, or old they are. That's just what you get with flat roofs. But I can't imagine the size roof we'd have to have if we didn't make it flat. So we have those pieces that we'll look at. What we'd like to do is just develop a roofing plan to say, how do we continue to stay on top of that? Because roofs get expensive after a while. I think that's part of the, the, the downside of the huge roof project that was done here. You bonded for it. Now we're already dealing with that again. And I, my first question again was warranties, but I think there's always that small piece to say, yeah, it covers everything except for that, but we'll continue to work through that piece there if we can. And then the lights out in the front that the, the buildings and grounds committee said, yes, stop waiting on that, get that taken care of. We have that. And then I know at South, um, Chad's big concern there is really the toilet flush system in the boys' bathroom. They actually, some of them climb up, I think, even on the urinal because the flusher is way up on top. You know, I think we had, there was a little bit of conversation about doing what Morris, I think the college has, where they automatically flush and it's the same tank system up on top. So Chad was looking into that to see what um, we could take care of there. But uh, I think, you know, the, the music room with that roof being fixed and recarpeted, I think that's made a nice space for our new music teacher there. So that's been helpful on that piece. No questions there. Then I'll go into my report, I think. Is that, or did I leave anybody else out? Oh, Mr. Fosleens. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, Mr. Fosleens, we kind of talked about those activities that are going on. I think he also talked about um, speech has some things coming up there uh, as well. So, yeah, you'll see that spring sports. As you look outside, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe we'll have to hold those in the greenhouse potentially, March 13th, but we'll make sure that things are ready. I know one of the things that was discussed also at the buildings and grounds was the dugout that's still tipped over there. Jake reassures us that will be taken care of and that'll be moved off to the new one. Uh, we've already talked to who will be taking care of that. So that should be taken care of there. As you saw tonight, we have some baseball coaching positions that we need to fill. So we need to get that taken care of. Um, as well as we need umpires for JV and junior high baseball and softball. So if you have any interest in that, I'm sure he would be willing to train and, and things like that. So if you'd be interested in doing that piece there, and then you'll see all the up, other upcoming events from wrestling to the band festivals, trip to deep portage, knowledge bowl, choir concert. I believe there's a band concert, large group contests. So again, speech uh, contest there as well. So, and visual arts contest. So our kids are going to be busy. I'm not sure they'll be on the building, so, but, they'll, but they will be doing great things. So it's always neat to see all the different activities. And I think that's one of the things that's always impressed me about WCA is the fact that we have kids that are playing football and then they come in and sing in the choir as well. So it's our size school, that's nice to see that our kids are given many opportunities to do, to do many things there. <coughs> Okay, then my report, strategic roadmap. So our admin team is still reviewing that to see how we find those different um, action cards. And really just there's a few focuses for them uh, when it comes down to student academics is going to be the big one that we'll look at. And then also helping with that retention and recruitment of staff. I have had to talk to a few folks as soon as those words go out. Then sometimes people think, well, then we should get whatever we want. So I would say those are buzzwords. What can we truly do all the time to make that be a good thing to separate us from different things? But just because I didn't get 
something that I wanted here. That doesn't mean that we don't care about you, that we don't want to retain you, um, but we want to make sure that we're working through that piece there. So we'll continue to bring those pieces back and report at our committee meetings so you'll know what we're working on and really kind of putting those action steps and when you'll see what tools we'll use to measure and how we're going to report back on those different pieces there. E-learning days, unfortunately, um, we've used all of our five e-learning days, so they have been exhausted. And I was just reading through the paperwork. There are some clarification pieces that I need to take care of um, from my own learning as I reviewed the document on notification and things like that. But uh, so now any days from here on out, we would have to make up or whatever the board would decide there. So today is one of those days. Today was not an e-learning day. So that's why you're going to see several schools in our area now that are saying school closed because they've also ran out of those days. And um, MDE is very clear that they have no latitude um, or authority to make a change to say, yeah, you can have more. I know there's a push, I think, down in southern Minnesota because I think they used all theirs very early in the in the year. And so they're concerned about that. So um, we have a backup date right now that like a holiday that we were, you know, so we always have, date. sometimes I, we have one. I'll have to double check to see. Oh, I, I know that our staff day on the 31st, we can't do anything because we do have That's speech plan. here. Yeah. Um, spring break, I suppose, would be one of the pieces over that. Well, I thought we protected a couple of those dates, though, and we said those were not. Well, I was going to say, gonna yeah, we said that we were going to do yeah. that because some people plan but to I, be gone over that. And, then, and so that might be very true. So I'll have to look at that. And I think quite was honestly. Was Easter maybe was one of them? Well, that would be spring break would be spring that time break, there. Okay. Yeah, spring break or Easter. Yep. But I think, and that very likely was the conversation mm -hmm. because there was no breaks between really January until that time. And that was one of the things that the calendar committee had noted was that piece there. So I think a couple of those days were in January and February. February. They we were hope that it's State, yeah, earlier in the year that we yeah, got the snow days used up and now we have very we, little we've bypassed those days so yeah so we're looking towards the the end of the year and of course we have the <clears> top stay <throat> that we didn't make up there's that minimum time frame that we need to be at wrestling will now impact that as well tomorrow because we're not making it that time staff will but it doesn't count as student time there so so you'll see we've had quite a few early outs late starts and um and using those e-learning days and and just to let you know that there's always concern uh i've received some emails saying why aren't we closing today why aren't we two hours late today very difficult decision. I just got to reassure everybody that I do reach out to uh, the county to see what they believe. Um, I do reach out to Steve. Steve's very good at the bus garage to call me actually the night before, usually about four o'clock. I'm like, Steve, we can't, four o'clock in the afternoon, we can't make a decision to out tomorrow already this early. So we got to get a little bit of time, it's not even snowing yet. And then all of a sudden it does usually snow. But, uh, so we do take that in consultation to see um, where we can be, but that'll be the challenge that we have lying ahead of us. My fear being last year, I think May brought weather days too, right? With storms. And so hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah, storms and power. So hopefully we don't have that happen as well. But uh, yeah, the Wednesday thing makes me nervous. And I, Megan, I can't believe that you put that on Wednesday. No, I know. I, no. Well, I was going to say, isn't is that like deported like next week too? Oh, great. So yeah. No. Just, I, last year, was it secondary school ski day that got moved? Like, yeah, yeah several. We ran in the same, yeah. Yikes, doesn't look good. So yeah, well, hopefully we'll be able to get all those things things taken care of and move forward. Already talked about the greenhouse uh, grand opening. A lot of great pride in our community. Um, a lot of great pride in Mr. Sawatsky. And Mr. Johnson does a very nice job, but I know Mr. Swatsky's put a lot of time and effort and and uh, the kudos goes out to him. And there was a lot of kudos, kudos that came from, from the folks that came in from the Lions Club to the commissioner of Ag. He's got connections, and that's going to be very helpful as we move forward on that piece there. Capital outlay budget. Um, this is where I kind of get a little excited. It means that we're starting to plan for the next year. The business office, they know that I get giddy about that just a little bit because it's all numbers and it's all good stuff. So we'll start to put that together. About 193000 is what we'd have available. One of the things that we have to do this year is we're really going to have to get stuff out early. And we all let our staff know that they have to really check on prices to make sure they're locked in and shipping's got to be calculated because the shipping and the supply chain issues caused a lot of increase and really overage in our capital outlay budget. And we just don't have the room to do that. Um, so we'll get that laid out. That'll be something the board would approve, but we'd really like to get that ordered, at least I believe in May. So things are ready to go. The auditors sometimes challenge that because it's really supposed to be used for next year, but we can make, make that work, but we'll bring that to you. And of course that's going to cover equipment. I think we look everything from uniform cycle for sports to 
all those different pieces to see kind of where we're at and we'll probably have some priorities that we'll lay out for staff just to make sure that we can keep it within that 193,000 but being a music guy myself that would be your band instruments your robes to your all those different pieces that we would incorporate into that spending so that'll go out to staff they all have time to look it over and then we will bring that back to the board for your approval and then the fiscal 2024 budget sitting down with all of our supervisors and admin to look over admin our technology expenses custodial expenses things like that of course one of those challenges is the federal funding is no longer there so that does tighten up that um, pool of money as well but we'll make sure that we have all the right things for our kids and we'll just have to be very resourceful as we go through those different pieces and just make sure that we're kind of following those budget guidelines that we lay out at the very beginning so we have work ahead of us um, as Natalie said numbers anywhere from around 50 we're graduating 60. So when you have 60 kids leaving and you have 50 kids coming in unfortunately that does cause some additional challenges to the budget then Diane did mention though we've got additional compensatory money coming in. I'm going to be looking at some different things that we could put, uh, talk maybe to the teachers group. Uh, they do get 2% set aside or it comes to the district it's not necessarily just for them but can we look at saying can we use 1% for professional development because we don't do a lot of professional development here and we have a, a already have some money reserved there so can we use one percent to help cover some of those additional expenses so that'll be stuff that i'll be bringing to you um, with some different ideas and things like that of what we can do so we'll really kind of be reviewing all those expenses closely everything from our um, college learning and stuff like that some of those bills seem to be quite significant we need to pro provide those programs but i think we would make, need to make sure that we're doing it in an appropriate manner there as well because some of those price tags are fairly hefty and we just want to make sure we're doing it the in the best way moving forward there but heard the message loud and clear programs staff make sure that you really look out for those pieces and so we will do that i'll lay that out to the board and so i've got that message loud and clear on that piece how'd i do excellent comments or questions from the board Okay, we'll move into our, thank you, Mr. Brown. Yeah. We'll move into our consent agenda. There are six items for board consideration on tonight's consent agenda. They are under resignations, uh, resignation of head baseball coach, Andy Kolaski, assistant baseball coach, Lucas uh, Byrice. I always want to say it differently. Yeah, no, you did it right. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Peter Ray for English teacher and Lisa Cora for assistant baseball coach. And then under new hires, we've got uh, Carla Nadgwick as special education paraprofessional in Kensington and Nisa Nadgwick as our payroll benefits manager effective 313 2023 at year one in the contract. Comments or questions from the board about the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. Motion passes. Uh, under new business, we have the first reading of the following policies with statutory and recommended changes by MSBA and or other updates. They are policy number 620, credit for learning, policy number 623, mandatory summer school instruction, policy number 701, establishment and adoption of school district budget, and policy number 701.1, .1, modification of school district budget. There is a summary of policy changes in the board packet. Any comments or questions from the board or anything you care to comment on, Mr. Bromo? Yep, so there's a couple things that I still need to clarify, so I'll have to get some more detail. I did not get that taken care of, and that's in regards to transfer of academic credit um, from students that are coming from other uh, public schools and also non-publics as well on what we would allow, what number do they have to have as a minimum number in order to count for GPA. You know, if they come over as a senior, we, we need to make sure that we have that all clearly laid out because that could have impact on class rank and GPA and things like that. So I've got to do some checking. The policy that you had approved way back in 2015 also didn't have a number there. It said insert number, but there's no number. And I then, found in discussion about this more recently than 15. Like they would change, like we were talking about the amount you'd have to have in order is to get. Or no, is that so this different? would be so this would be a transfer student. So let's say a student comes from Minnetonka schools. How many credits do they have to have in order to count that towards GPA and things like that? So, so maybe yeah. what I'm thinking of is more of the 
graduation requirements. I've got, okay. You need to have this many credits okay. to graduate. No, this is all about transfers okay. coming in. So I need to do some checking with other schools um, to see how they handle that. But yeah, I looked at the old one and it said it also said in certain number there wasn't a number there. So I'll do some research there with some of our neighboring schools to see what they have and bring that back to the board. And then the other piece there, um, it does, um, we just are going, we don't weight grades. So that second part on there, there is no well, grade waiting here. So that does not pertain in the, uh, in that first policy, the credit for learning, because uh, we do not weight grades at this time. And then on the other piece, it was um, uh, mandatory summer school instruction. And so my recommendation, they had several highlights there, but ESY is one of those pieces that we would mandate or require. Mandate's a heavy word. It means it's required. So I think we want to be cautious there. And then I would leave it to any other programs mandated by the school district at that point. I don't know if we want to, they talk about literacy. If a student isn't at re, uh, grade level going into third grade, that uh, reading would be mandated for them as summer school. I guess we can talk about that. I get a little concerned about that because sometimes there's, we need to do our very best during the school year. And sometimes if you add additional pieces to that, now we're sometimes penalizing the student to say, now you're taking my summer away and there could be some issues with getting them to summer school. So I think we, for this next year, should just have a plan. And if we see a certain number of students that are behind, I think we could recommend that piece to them, but to mandate it in board policy, I think is pretty, and I still think having that or other um, programs mandated by the school district still gives us that opportunity. So that would be my recommendation, having it there rather than blanket statement saying, if you're not at grade level and reading by the end of second grade, now you have to come to summer school. Because I think there could be some other pieces that would, and, that, and MSBA just said, we're listing things for illustration the board needs to decide. And so mine would be, like I said, ESY, which um, typically is families want their kids to be in there because they're not going, they're going to have a greater regression over the summertime if they qualify for special education. So there has to be certain criteria. And then I would say any other program. So if we do believe that there would be a piece uh, that there needs some, to be some academic catch up, we could do that. And that would fall under that other programs mandated by the school. It's okay, I figured it. <laughs> I was doing English as a second language. Oh, sorry. And, yes. and I'm like, that's not the right letter, so I'm not. Yep, no, okay, extended school year. Sorry about that. No, that's yeah. okay. I was just well, you can throw to... your accounting ones out, and I'll be, yeah, I'll be confused. I, yeah. So, yeah, we don't. So that's, um, and then all the other policies are really just, as it comes to budget and things like that, really stay the same. You know, we did do some budget revisions, and so we talk about expenditures and revenues, and it follows really with the policy stating that we're really technically not to, if, and remember, it's our overall budget, so it doesn't have to be just in one category. But our, So if Fund 1 has the dollars to cover it, then we're fine. But if we don't have that, we're really supposed to bring that back to the board. But And so that's why I like to come back to say, here's where our student numbers are now in January or February. Hey, we've seen that our fuel bill is going to be more expensive. Snow removal is going to be more expensive. Other pieces that um, could start to go up legal um, fees could go up and stuff like that. So just coming back with that revision. So when we get to the end of the year, it's not a shock to say, well, what happened here? We lost 10 students and, and you didn't account for it. I think we just like to account for it on, on that uh, time frame going forward. Diane, did I leave anything out on there or misexplain or add confusion? She always gets nervous when I say, do you want me to keep adding more payroll things to you? Any comments or questions from the board? <clears throat> Okay, we'll move on to our next item under new business is to approve state wrestling tournament plan. Mr. Brownlow, do you want to provide an update to the board? I can do that. So, yeah, I think I was starting to kind of put things together and then um, somebody wiser than me said, I think we've already done this once or twice last year. So why would we recreate everything and cause commotion and confusion? So we really did look at the prior year's plan. One of the things that might be a little bit different is the expectation is staff will have to either go down to the state wrestling tournament and then make up time in the building so they can do it after school. If they choose to stay an extra hour, they're going to make that or work that out with their supervisors to do that. Or they can just work their regular hours tomorrow if they would like. So they have those two choices to do that. Now, I do believe we have a couple staff that are going along as chaperones on our fan bus, um, which leaves tomorrow at 530. So I'm hoping the weather is going to hold and, and stay good. Again, consulted with 
Palmer and the county, and they believe that things should be fine if nothing changes there. But those folks, that would be their assigned time because they're supervising kids. So it's not like they're going down just to watch and not doing that. So they, they will do that. But other than that, everybody else will be expected to either be here, down there. If they go down there, they make up that time. Again, except for our wrestling coaches, we're not going to ask them to say go down and coach and then you need to come back up on that piece there. So it's um, that's how it's working for staff. I recognized right at the very beginning that any day that we don't have school is a day that's an impact on families who have kids, right? So as soon as we say we're not going to have school right away, they're panicking to say, now what do I do with my kids? So that's why we are offering that student supervision piece. I'm not calling it daycare because we're keeping our daycare programs separate, start charging the same fees. Our numbers aren't very big. Um, I think we're at five and four, so it's a very small. Eight and six. Eight and six. So it's grown just a little bit more. Um, but they'll have other work to do. They can help some of the teachers in special ed or, or regular ed to do photocopying, bulletin boards, so when our parents come in. So there'll be items for them to do. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't leave our families in, in a bind. Now, it's still not the best for everybody, right? Because there's no transportation. We're from 8 to 3.30, but tried to meet them partway um, because I believe that's an important piece to provide that, that supervision piece wherever we can to help out in our staff. I think there was confusion at first, but once we got rid of the confusion i think they understand why why we're doing that i've got to tell you i did receive a concern um from somebody in the district that just said you need to recognize i'm not sure if you're the sole one that made this decision but we need to make sure what are our priorities are they academics or education and it does put a bind and i said completely understood it's not one of those things that i just said yeah we're going to state wrestling it's one of those things that we have to look at and see i think we reevaluate if we start to see where we're going every year we may have to say okay is it necessary for elementary to go now if a family decides to go we would excuse that but is it just the high school that we don't have or do we have it here and if families decide to go they can they can go because i know this person i think pointed out i'm not sure if our two uh, schools that cooperate with us i'm not sure they're closing but i think we have a lot of numbers on the team as well so it's sometimes all those pieces coming together right it's always knowing when to close and when not to close of course it doesn't help that today we don't have school either so it's two days in a row so we'll have to just kind of continue to look at that but it should be a great time i don't know if you saw on facebook the thing with mr gruco i think that says quite a bit as well that's a very cool piece there um and so our, our student athletes have done a great job and, and so hopefully they'll be well supported which i think this community follows them very well and uh, good luck to all those student athletes so that's really kind of our plan is all of our folks to get paid are going to put time in so it's not a free day for them it's really a free day for our students um, but then we'll get them caught back up on every turn um so my question would be because it it doesn't sound like the the board needs to take action specifically in the plan it sounds like you're operating based off of past practice solved a couple of additional issues like the child supervision piece of it um and not having been at the last board meeting did the board uh approve that being a non-student contact day for staff no i gotta bring the whole or calendar that. to the march board meeting because also i'll bring all these days sometimes some schools wait till the very end so it'll be all of our e-learning days mm -hmm. our day that we close school here our top stay i'll bring that whole piece <laughs> then we may have to revise it again if we have any additional days do we so the board anything because it's close tomorrow i mean because it's tomorrow we're not having school do we have to do anything, anything because of that or not you may want to yeah approve that the, the non-school day probably okay. would be that just to so take action on okay so i'm yep. going to ask if there is a motion to approve um, tomorrow being a non-student contact day with parameters set by administration for making up that work time to allow um, individuals in our community and our staff to attend the state wrestling tournament should they so choose. So moved. Okay, and is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. Motion passes. Anything else that you need from the board related to that item? Nope. The only other thing, not not on that. So that should bill. We'll just report back and let you know how that goes. One of the things I forgot to mention when I talked about the year, the learning days, and and we'll continue to monitor this. Some of the schools are now going away from e-learning, and I think there's some value in e-learning. But I know that we've heard some things that our staff have said, especially in the elementary. One day is manageable. Two becomes a challenge and three is not a good idea having three days of e-learning so i think we would look at that to say do we set parameters that was one of my things last week when we 
had the second day in a row, I'm like, okay, do I buy that? No, because then some of those folks are going to say, are you kidding me? Now we have to make that day up and we're going to be one more day because we'd never have another snow day after that, even if I was hoping for one. But uh, so, but I think we do need to look at that. I will tell you there are some school districts that are moving away from e-learning because I was just listening to the radio yesterday and, and I know somebody said, I like how West Fargo, I don't like how West Fargo does their days, but I like how Fargo that they still have an old fashioned snow day. There's some families that say an old fashioned snow day is really appreciated. There's a balance on both sides, right? Cause we, if we do an e-learning, we don't have to make up the day. And then our teachers really, cause now we're asking if we, if we don't make the, if we have to make the day up now, they've got to extend their calendar later into the school year. But I also know a lot of families e-learning is an absolute disaster, you know? And so I think we need to see how effective it is to make sure that we're doing it justice, you know, that way. And so I don't want people to think that I'm looking to get rid of it, but I do think we always need to check the effectiveness of it. And like I said, families, um, I've heard from some folks that just say it is, well, I think we have to realize some families have three, four kids, right? So now you're trying to get this one set up. You got to do this. You got to do that. Make sure that you have enough internet bandwidth and things like that. So I think we just want to check in to say, are there things we could do? It might be small to so say, if you can do one day, we can we can handle that when it's two in a row. And maybe it's the idea that we would never do three in a row potentially to say, okay, now we've got to forgive one of those days, but just to do some follow-up so we can continue to say the great things like Kevin said that our students are, are getting that figured out and how can they work independently. But I think it's also different from, and our elementary teachers do an amazing job though from kindergarten all the way up to being a junior or senior, those expectations are completely different. I saw that when I went in to read and in the classroom, it's like, okay, they're not all being quiet. They're being quiet. That's right. We have to redirect. We have to redirect. So, but I think just one of the pieces that we'll continue to monitor there as well. I think we definitely need to survey. I just, I just know when I think about it, you know, obviously everybody's going to be all over the board on that topic. Um, when you have multiple kids in the house, whatever, I think that, um, the pandemic gave us an appreciation for the difference between an e-learning day and distance learning. Um, like my kids get excited about an e-learning day now where before it was like, uh, you know, okay. so I mean, and obviously it's all over the board. Um, but I just, I've compared some of the stuff that like I've seen just in my house and I have several different ages to what I hear other schools are doing. And I think we have it pretty good. So good. Good. I mean, I, you know, I've talked, some schools still do e-learning and they have a packet <laughs> that gets sent home with their kid and the parents are going home after work and that's when they're doing the work. Mm -hmm or they're trying to do e-learning, but they don't have actual classroom time. So like, I just think that, and I think that you're gonna hear probably more feedback right now from the people who maybe aren't liking it, then you're gonna hear feedback from the people who don't mind it. Sure. And I just, like I said, I just wanted to point that out as I have heard from different, I have several different schools of where people I work with. And so they, they handle their e-learning days way differently. Yep. And I just said, I just think it's different. Definitely. We have appreciation for e-learning versus distance learning. So, yes. Yeah. I think distance learning is a bad, but I think it still. would be great to get feedback. One other thing we talked about too, though, is, you know, some people say, well, you're not getting good learning on an e-learning. Right. But we have to weigh that against what June. good learning are you going to get in June right. when everybody is ready to right. be done last week and now we're back in the correct. Absolutely. So, I mean, there's a, there's give and take there. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's not a perfect system, but I think you're, I would think you're still getting more out of your e-learning day than you are. Out of a well, I also day. think the fact so, that we only have five, it's not like we're going to have yeah, 15. Right. right. Yep. So, I mean, that's the part that for me is, yeah, the thought of maybe more than three isn't great in a row, but at the same time, it's still a max of five. Mm -hmm. So, yep, absolutely. I think the other piece that just needs to be considered is <laughs> even when the kids are in class, it's not always direct instruction to new material. A lot of our time in school is spent reinforcing past concepts, tying together ideas, and it's that, that building on knowledge. And that's what the e-learning is horrible for introducing new topics right. and new content mm -hmm. but as a structured review and building skill day which i think most of our teachers have really pushed towards because they can support the students needs like i see vanessa doing it she introduces here's what we're doing here's this all right here are your tasks i'm staying on kids who need help stick around, we'll share screens, we'll work through problems together, kids who just get it, they're working, they're touching back in and they're showing what they've accomplished, they're, they're figuring it out. So, and obviously that's middle school, it's much different, but right. even my, you know, my third grader now, he does a lot of the same stuff of 
they're practicing skills that they've done. They have the worksheet that you're showing what the worksheet is, just like she demonstrated in school, but it's not a new concept. It's reinforcing the, that, that prior knowledge, which happens during a normal school day too. Right, and I just thought, I was in the classroom with my son because we volunteered to do that. And just, it was kind of interesting because they did, it was the same thing. Up on the, the worksheet was up on the big board and she was doing that, you know, and I'm just like, that's exactly what they're doing on those days, so. I just think, like I said, it's, it's going to be all over the board. We know that. Yep. Yeah, for some, it's, it's regardless of however they want to be able to have them there because it's also one of those things of here right now, who's going to do yep. it? If I've got younger ones, yep. I still have to go to work because my job's still demanding me to be there. So I got to be there. But I think to your point, Kim, I think the great point is figuring it out. I think how do we still release our kids to let them know that critical thinking? Because I think sometimes they want us to do all those different pieces. I know today as I was working, my wife was grateful because the district I was in before they were doing it. And the teacher said this was their first day doing it. And she said, high school kids are just not reading anything. She had all the instructions. There. What do we do? Do we just, do we just check in? Are we done? So, and so those pieces there. And so I think trying to work through that, but I think that key piece, that critical thought, how can they do it independently? And do that i think that's going to be a key piece there too but our teachers are doing excellent it's just figuring out how do we continue to improve on that each time to make it better for all those people because i think it is going to be a valuable piece of remote work when people can stay and they don't have to always travel to do that i think it's coming back a little bit back to brick and mortar but i still think there's going to be that opportunity where if you don't need to be there you can do it this way very good sounds like lots of good future discussion um, let's move on to our discussion items, starting with number one, certified and non-certified staff seniority lists. Mr. Brownlow, I will pass discussion over to you. Sure. So you're going to see a lot of information there. And we've had a few folks, um, which I was glad to see that they wanted to check and make sure that it was correct and accurate. And so the key being that it's their first day of employment with the school district and continuous improve or continuous employment. Um, so if somebody took a leave, now that's still continuous employment, but if somebody resigned and then came back, we have one particular situation with that, then it starts over when they came back. And it's that first, there's a, I've always even been confused a little bit myself. So I had to do some checking um, with MSBA and reviewing some documents there. And so really it's going to be that first day. And I know Diane, she looked back and that's why you're going to see, Diane, you were able to go all the way back to like 2000. 12 or something like that, right? Because that's what you're going to see some nine ones. I think that was the default in the past. We just put everybody at nine one. And so I think we're very accurate all the way up until like that 2012. But you're going to see there's some August even in 2000. Um, you know, that way the seniority list really is only necessary. And then there was some confusion. Some people said, well, no, I really started here. I said, your years of service is different than seniority. We just wanted to make sure that that was clean and accurate and so you're going to see those lists in front of you there from our teaching staff to our so our certified and then our non-certified staff there um, is kind of how we've laid that out really kind of following the model set by msba um, you know there so you're going to see their fte status it matters if they're a tier three four or tier one and two teacher if they're tier three and four that is measured differently than if you're a tier one and two, a tier one, there is no seniority. So that's why we've laid all those different pieces out there, gave folks time to provide feedback in case they felt something was missing. Uh, you know, as we move forward there, matter of fact, I think we corrected one. Uh, there was some confusion. We had a teacher who started here after they had taught three years in another Minnesota school district. Jared, I'm gonna test you on this one. You, we were there that day in tier, in, uh, in our level two stuff. And so if you teach three consecutive years in, a same, in the same school district in the state of Minnesota, regardless if they not non-renew you or not, your next district, you only need one probationary year. And so I think we had one that was still on a probationary time frame here. And so I called them in and I said, I'm reading your resume that you have in your file. It says you were three years at this school prior to, and this particular person said, well, there was such turnover in administration. I'm not sure they never gave me anything that said I had continuing contract or tenure status. And I said, you don't need to get anything. If you taught three full years in that district, then you have that moving forward. So we did make that one change there. So um, hopefully 
this is very accurate. We'll give our staff more time to review it in case they, there's still one that we're working through. Um, and so we'll get that taken care of, but just wanted to bring that to your attention. And really where this timeline follows, where only becomes important, like one is getting the pins, right? But that's a whole separate line. And that's what I've heard mainly is, well, I just wanna make sure I get the right, absolutely, we don't wanna take that away. That's a great retention tool. But if we would ever have to look at reductions, this is the list that you go to. And the reason why the 0.5 or the 0.78, that's all that they would have continuing contract status to. So they can't bump into a different position, higher position. We just want to make sure that it's clean, that if we ever get into a position where we do need to look at reductions, that there's no surprises at that point that they see where this is at. So Chrissy put a lot of time into getting that taken care of. Diane put a lot of time into looking at old school um, calendars to see and i believe what you have in front of you is very accurate with the exception of one and i think that's mainly years of service in the district they do agree that their last time of continuing service was a different year or is a year that's listed but we just want to make sure that that's all very clean um that there's no surprises there very good comments or questions Okay, we'll move on to number two, budget levy facilities. Three really big topics that's, in one. <laughs> one there. Should we just let Diane talk? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Where, uh, perhaps we start with budget. Yep, absolutely. So Diane, you cut me off wherever you feel, or do you want to start and then I can? No? Okay. Um, so on our budget, we're starting to look at, so we've done a budget revision already in, in fiscal 2023, helped we grew a few students um, in numbers wise, as well as there were some other federal funds that we were able to tap into and things like that. So this, and I'm trying to think, Diane, I can't remember right off the top of my head, we're projecting a budget deficit at the end of the year, but I think the board was aware that we were going to, to have that. So. I think there's a difference between deficit spending and not knowing what's going on compared to planned deficit spending. And my understanding is it was planned deficit spending. You know where we're going to be. You know, I think Diane brings up a great point. There's, I don't know, she's going to say, don't bring up my points if I didn't want to endorse these. So if she didn't, she'll just cut me off. But that um, fund balance, and I think Maya has talked about this as well, fund balance needs to be used when we get to points of when maybe things are starting to drop just a little bit. We're not in the business of growing fund balances to a large level because then people want to know why are they continuing to pay taxes when we have a large fund balance. So there's a fine balance of saying, here's where we want that to remain for that rainy day fund. But at the same point, when we have a need, we can cover that need. And so we believe we're still in a healthy spot there. We need to look at some things very closely over the next year to make sure that we can remain healthy. Um, or, you know, potentially down the road, have to look at some potential um, reductions and things like that. Unless we start to see revenue grow, we're hearing five and five from the state. Um, maybe it's going to be two and two. So all those pieces matter as we move forward. Depends on where our student count as well. So there's a lot of factors when it comes to revenue. Um, and then also expenditures to see if there's certain expenditures. One of the words of wisdom that I was told by an experienced superintendent, anytime you have somebody leaving the district, that's always a good time to say, do we need to replace that position? Because I'm going to be honest with you, in my 17 years, I've never made reductions. I've been very fortunate that way because I've heard um, heart-wrenching stories when you have to go tell somebody that here's the pink slip, we don't have a job for you next year. I also know it's the reality of the business, so I, I don't want it, but it would be perfect if, if I could avoid that all the way through. But in my 17 years, I've not had to do that. My very first year, they had already taken care of that. They were in statutory operating debt. That's pretty easy because the state comes in and tells you how to take care of that stuff there in a different format. So, so I just want to manage, and I know Diane's done a nice job of that, say, Here's where our expenditures are, here's where our revenue is, and here's how we have to live within those means, you know, moving forward that way. And I believe that we can come up with a plan for this upcoming year to have that. There's going to have to be some deficit spending, but I want you to, we'll lay out kind of those different pieces to say class sizes, priorities of programs, all those pieces lay that out to say, and here's what it costs. And so you could say, okay, well, I think if we don't see more numbers coming, then we need to probably start taking a closer look at these pieces here and things like that. So I think then that also points us to the fact that on our levy, our operating levy, we have $1,551 in operating levy, but we also have 724 in 
LOR, local optional revenue that can be board approved. So the 724, there's some tiering structures there where there's some state aid that comes with that equalization. Um, I don't believe on the 1551, there would be much aid there as if, if there's any, um, you know, that way. So, so I think that's what we have to look at as well. We have that in place still for next school year and the following school year. So this is where Diane may have to cut me off and say, no, that's wrong. But we know that we'll be able, so next December, um, 2023, we would, the five-year operating levy has been passed. So it's not that you have to pass anything there, but you would just say, yep, we're going to continue to request those dollars plus the LOR. And so that would happen in December. You would certify that levy. The taxes would be collected in May and October. And we would recognize that for our 24, 25 school year. So we are good when it comes to levy through 24, 25. One of the things I think that needs to be considered is inflation has really taken hold over this last year. And so the those dollar amounts have not increased. And so we got to be cognizant of that as well as we move forward because attracting and retaining staff is going to cost more money. I think if we um, say we're going to have to just flatline, I'm concerned about that. And, and we may have to do that. So I don't want it to go out there that, no, you promised us this, but... I also am fully aware of that, that opportunities are out there and we got to be you know, fully aware of that piece there as well. But we have to be very good stewards of those dollars as we as we move forward. So I think looking at all those pieces moving forward is going to be a challenge. But Diane will be able to get that figured out. And I enjoy doing that piece, um, you know, to look at that, to say, here's the dollars we have. I think the other challenge that comes with that is going to be our facilities as we've had to start looking at some of those pieces with some repairs, you know, and I think one of the comments by when I was talking to one of the board members is, okay, remember, we've got to talk about things we can control and things we can't control. So what are the pieces we can control? What are the pieces maybe not as easy? And I would say sometimes it's those building repairs. We have a contingency plan built in there. It's getting smaller as we move forward, but I really do think we have to then look at that to say, okay, we are putting, several dollars into fixing different pieces. If that's the priority, that's what we need to do. But then it's going to take away from other areas that we have, you know, that way as well. If we're going to make that, if we have to take away from here, then that does impact programs or, or um, staff and things like that. So that's really, I always say budgeting is pretty simple. There's only so much money. What people get at home, you have to figure it out, right? If all of a sudden gas becomes more money, then you realize, we can't go out to eat as much, or I guess we're going to have to get generic brand this or different things like that. Now it's just on a grander scale of trying to get that figured out. Does that give a good leeway in, or is that, did I really confuse things? <coughs> Diane, is there anything that I've, from the business manager, you've been here, it just feels like two years, right? But you, I had your kids in band, so that was a while ago. So, but, uh, but anything that you want to add to that when we talk about levy, budget and then moving forward so i mean speaking of timeline what we're talking about is we would we would put something on the ballot this fall in hopes that it passes, it wouldn't change what we levy next year um, because we're good through 24, 25. Yep. And then if uh, for some reason we needed to revisit it because it didn't pass in the fall, then we would have one more opportunity next year to put it on the ballot so that hopefully we don't run into a situation where our levy lapses. Um, we know as a district, we are very reliant on our levy to be able to offer the programs and the half the staffing that we have and the small class sizes and so a lot of implications for um, us having a successful pass at the levy, whether it stays the same or goes up or goes down or whatever you do with it. But um, would that be an accurate description of when we talk about timeline, that's what we're talking about, correct? So typically we've done revoke and renew. Is Are you saying we would not do revoke and renew? I'm not saying we're doing anything different. No, than we have well, I just, no, because you said it, because if we passed we did it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't oh, impact. So that's what I'm asking. Times, we did. We've done revoke and renew, but what she's saying is, because this year's taxes go to 24, 25, it's not going to affect what we tax 
this year, it wouldn't take effect until the following year, right? But Is that we right? We did a revoke and renew once, correct? Well, Where we actually two times we have, I think. Once or twice we've done it. I think the last year we just did a and then it renewed for five years. So it we've done it both ways. That's why I was just asking. I was trying to clarify if you were saying that we were going to do one or the other. Is what I was. But we don't know yeah. what we're doing. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Right. And okay. we may have to check to see because ten years may be the maximum. So can you actually have eleven years? So could we pass if it was successful this year? Could we say we're going to let this year run out and we'll go to the ten years? Yeah, or we you would probably revoke and renew if you right. move it to ten. Well, yeah. There's only there's like a handful of districts that do a five year. Right. We've always done a five. So that's why. So then, yeah, it wouldn't make sense to do a revoke and renew. We just did. If we were going to change to a 10 year, that would well, really make more sense. Well, revoke and renew would make sense based off of the scenario that Mr. Brownlow is saying. If if it can, if 10 if is can. the maximum, then you would have to revoke because it would be, be 11 years. We, it would be 11 years. So if you move towards a model where it's 10 years, then it's revoke and renew most likely. Otherwise, if you stay with the five year model, you can just renew, which means next year is still off of the old levy that was passed and the year after that then moves into the whole cycle of the new we we're looking at time balance okay yeah now i got it and what i would probably do is reach out to ellers financial diane and i have talked i know you've used baker tilly um in the past and but unfortunately baker tilly my understanding is they don't really have a they have a local office, but they don't have local people anymore that are operating that office. And so I've had very good luck with Ellers just to really look at many different avenues to say the best opportunity for taxpayers to get any equalization would be to look at it this way, to structure it this way. And so I will reach out to them so they can help us through that process too, to say, here's what would be best for ag land. Here's what would be best for, you know, commercial and things like that, because they have all that expertise. I just don't want to miss out on something that would be beneficial to our taxpayers because we didn't reach out to the experts to do right. that. Right. And with so, the interest at rate market, that's, I mean, interesting to think about too, like what's going on now versus what, you know, has been. So I'm sure yeah. we'll have some in insight on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. They're very good at that. Make it so it's understandable, I think is the yeah. key. That sounds good. And then the facilities part of our discussion is to prepare to talk about facilities. <laughs> we won't start that discussion tonight. Um, that's certainly a, uh, I've been thinking a little bit about this conversation because we're, we've all been immersed in conversations about facilities. It's not a new conversation to anybody sitting at this table, I'll put it that way, but we've, we've joined that conversation at different points in time. Um, there's a lot of options that have been considered. There's several um, bond votes that we've gone out for. And so, it, you know, what comes into question is where the board wants to start the process. And I think if we just simply sit down at a meeting and ask that very open-ended question, we may be sitting here for a real long time. <laughs> um, so I've started to work with Mr. Brownlow on um, questions that we can use to facilitate that conversation um, and make sure that we're very focused on uh, making sure that everyone has the opportunity to provide feedback and talk about where they feel like we're starting the process. Are we starting from the very beginning with the new construction company and doing an assessment of our facilities? Are we starting at let's uh, review last year's vote and how we feel about it and continue conversations we've had before? Or are we starting somewhere in between or somewhere we've never started before? So um, uh, as we get to the April committee meeting, right? Yep. So our March meeting, true to the structure of our business meeting, will focus on um, passing business related to what we talked about tonight at our committee meeting. And then our April committee meeting, we will start our discussions about facilities and trying to flesh out what direction we want to go and give Mr. Brownlow some more direction on how he can support the board as they think about making a decision um, relating to our aging facilities. So not a lot to discuss tonight other than if you have particular questions that you're interested to know um the answer to as we think about where we're going to start the conversation um you can send those to mr brownlow or send them to me and we'll look at where we can add those into the facilitated questions there will be a little bit of board pre-work so once mr brownlow and i have an opportunity to finalize those questions we'll send those out to the board by email and would ask that you take a little bit of time to look at those questions and prepare a a response so we all can walk away from that meeting feeling like it was really productive. Um, sometimes facilities conversations can feel like we're circling um, in multiple different ways just because seven different unique individual perspectives, that's a lengthy conversation. So 
that's all I had on facilities tonight, unless there's other questions or comments. <coughs> okay. Uh, we are at the end of our agenda, so I'll ask if there's a motion to adjourn. So moved. And is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same sign. Motion passes. Jared didn't even let me finish that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Meyer, you you've got to 